Well, I hope your Tuesday's off to a good start. We are reading Acts chapter 19 today in our New Testament reading plan. I wanted to share with you what I had written in my journal uh, because God had spoken to my heart as I was reading this chapter uh, recently. And uh, I started writing in my journal. The first word I wrote was the word syncretism. And that may not be a word you're familiar with, syncretism, but it's the idea that you take different beliefs, different religions, different philosophies, and you combine them in some way, you know, an amalgamation, if you will, that uh, you create a belief system that you like bits and pieces from different ones. And that was a very common practice in ancient times. And and you'll remember two chapters earlier in Acts, in chapter 17, when Paul was in Athens and he went to Mars Hill and they had all these uh, statues and idols to different gods. And they even have one to an unknown God. And Paul used that as the starting point for his sermon to tell them about the God who created the universe and Jesus Christ. And so in Acts chapter 19, he's in the city of Ephesus and, and they have a, a religion there where they worship a, 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 a goddess, Artemis, and... and uh, and it's interesting, as the gospel began spreading and people started being saved, uh, we're told in verses 18 and 19 of chapter 19, if you've got your Bible open, the book of Acts, 18 and 19 says, Many of those who had believed kept coming, confessing, and disclosing their practices. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And, uh, and and they burned a lot of books because it cost a lot of money. Then later, some of the artisans in Ephesus started losing money because people weren't buying idols anymore. And that led to an uproar and some persecution of the Christians there in Ephesus. But the point is that in the New Testament, in the gospel, there is no room for syncretism. There's no room to take the gospel of Jesus Christ and then take ideas from different religions and kind of marry them and create a religion you like. Because syncretism says, I like A about this religion. I like B about that religion. I like C about this philosophy. And, and I kind of create something that I agree with, that I like in my own religion. That was a very common practice. And it's very popular in America today. Uh, for instance, if someone travels to America, they relocate here from a, maybe a predominantly Hindu, uh, Hindu nation. It's not uncommon for them you know, in Hinduism to worship many gods. And so they'll come to the States and sometimes they will confess Jesus and we think they've gotten saved. And some, some do. But what many do is they're, they're simply adding Jesus to their pantheon of gods. And so as Jesus just becomes another one of these idols. That's what syncretism is. Now, most of us in our country, most lost people, most people in our worldly culture, they don't do that. But what they do is they like some things about Christianity. They like some things about whatever philosophy. And they just merge them all together and create their own religion. The Bible says, no, you, you, can't, you can't marry the gospel of Jesus to other religions and create your own. That is the reason when in, in the city of Ephesus, these people who were magicians and these people who worship this other you know, uh, idol and statue, this God, once they became believers, they brought their, their books of magic and so and they burned them because they understood you can't just add Jesus to your previous religion. You can't just add Jesus to another worldly philosophy. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. That's why they stopped buying the idols. That's the reason the artisans got upset. That's the reason they burned the books. They realized it's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus and Jesus only. And, and I know it's very common in our culture for people to create a God in their own mind, their own imagination that always agrees with them. But Scripture says, no, it's Jesus and Jesus alone. And even those of us who are genuinely following Jesus Christ, one of my prayers is that during these days of self-isolation and social distancing, and, and we start looking at our lives, that maybe we'll realize that in some ways, We've been compromising Jesus and adding Jesus with worldly philosophies, adding Jesus with our own ideas. And maybe it's time we, we come back to the reality that it's Jesus and Jesus alone, that he's Lord and, 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 and that sometimes what he says encourages us and then other times what he says convicts us. But it's all for our good and it's all from love. It's Jesus and Jesus only. Father, Help us to never dilute the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us to never weaken the faith that you have given us by mingling it with worldly 
philosophies, and worldly religions. Let us love Jesus and Jesus only. Amen. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.